Can you hear me at the back? Good morning, everyone. Um, how's everyone? How was the keynote? Was it good? Inspiring? Right. It's going to be tough to do the first session after the keynote. All right. Because well, everyone, we welcome don't. to the webinar. There you go. Because we don't have any lights to, to demo, but uh, I hope this is going to be fun for you. Um, in this session, uh, for, first of all, uh, thank you very much for, for coming to, to San Diego. Uh, I can see faces from Europe, so thank you very much for coming. Um, and thank you very much for uh, uh, choosing this session as the first session in, in the morning. Um, a session in which we are going to talk about how we can integrate processes into our digital workplace, or in other words, uh, we're going to talk about how we can integrate Busy, the digital workplace solution, with the Nintes Workflow platform. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Marcos. I'm technical evangelist in EMEA, in the London office. And I'm proud to be one of the leaders of this uh, partnership, working very, very hard with, uh, with Busy. It's been eight months, nine months of very hard work. But uh, so far, the results uh, have been uh, fantastic, not only from the technical point of view, which we'll show you later in the demo that uh, is uh, an, an amazing combination of products, but also from the commercial point of view. Uh, we are seeing a lot of traction, and we are generating a lot of attention in the, uh, in the European uh, market. Um, and if uh, one strong Spanish accent is not enough in the room, we're going to have two, because with me is Jordi Blana, CEO of BC. Hi, thanks uh, everyone for coming to our session and uh, thanks also to Gonzalo and the brother and Intex team for inviting us to participate in this uh, great event. Again, apologies for my Spanish strong accent, but I thought that uh, for an event in Southern California that would be okay. So we'll, we'll manage. All right, the agenda for today, well, is very, it's very basic. We want to tell you uh, we want to bring here to America and explain you everything that we have been doing with PC, with this technology uh, partnership. Um, but obviously, uh, I guess that not all of you know uh, BC in the room. Uh, so I'm going to ask Jordi to do a little bit of introduction of what uh, really BC is, what really BC does. And then uh, I'll explain you more or less how we have created this partnership, how we have created this integration. And we will jump directly to our uh, demo scenario and show you some, I think, some good use cases. So uh, first things first, um, Jordi, do you think that uh, I know that you can speak hours around BC, but uh, you think you could do it in five, ten minutes? I think, I think I'll manage, yes. Um, so what is BC uh, for uh, the ones who doesn't know about it? So Busy is the intelligent workplace solution for modern organizations built in Office 365 and SharePoint. So we run on SharePoint 2013, we run on SharePoint 2016, we also run on Office 365, and of course we also support hybrid uh, scenarios. Uh, so being a native uh, SharePoint solution, um, we get all the integration points with the Microsoft platform by design, so no integration efforts are needed, right? Uh, then we leverage, sorry, we leverage the platform, um, the underlying platform as much as we can and as much as it makes sense for our customers. So we are leveraging, of course, SharePoint, we're leveraging OneDrive, we're leveraging Skype for Business, uh, the Graph, etc., etc. And then on top of this, we have our own uh, engine, our own business layer that connects all the dots of the Microsoft platform that surprisingly sometimes are disconnected. And we also extend the out-of-the-box functionality of SharePoint. We built the product from the ground up, having our partners in mind. We work through partners. We also have a channel. And um, because of that, the first thing we built was a robust REST API. So all busy backend functionality, 100% of it is exposed through an API. So this makes our product extremely extensible and made it very easy for our team to develop the Nintex integrations that, you're going to show today, that we're going to show today. And finally, 
we deliver these uh, great functionalities through an award-winning user experience. So um, uh, one of the nicest compliments mm, we sometimes, or quite often, I would say, we get from customers and partners is that we make SharePoint not look like SharePoint, right? But as we saw in the previous layer, in the business layer here in this, in this slide, BZ is not just a pretty face. Uh, you can build your own pretty face uh, on top of BZ, uh, and our partners can do it very rapidly and very easily. They can customize the branding and the user uh, interface of BZ by using what we call uh, branding packages, which are mostly CSS and JavaScript files. So every time we release a new version, and that is quarterly, uh, this version doesn't affect the branding package. It only affects the middle layer here in, in, the, in the diagram, right? Uh, so <coughs> Busy delivers on the four pillars of a modern digital workplace, not only on the communication and collaboration bits like many other vendors do, but also on the knowledge pillar and most importantly, on the processes pillar. And by the way, that pillar is the toughest one, and of course, it will be at the core of our session today. And then we make this workplace customizable, we make it mobile, and by leveraging the Microsoft Cognitive Services, we also make it intelligent. And we will see, we will see some of this today. We have hundreds of thousands of users um, coming into the busy newsfeed every day since this is the entry point to their digital workplace. And all those many uh, users are screaming for business process integration so they can stop having to switch from up to up in order to get work done. Six months ago, more or less, we released uh, intelligent workflows that is made up of the busy bot, which is becoming the primary interface for the user uh, to the organization he or she works for. And it also includes the action cards, which are single purpose uh, units of work on third party systems that users can take action from the busy newsfeed. Uh, we have delivered uh, some functionalities that we had in our roadmap around the processes pillar and because of the great momentum that we are seeing in the field, we will keep delivering on, on that area. So expect a lot more from us in the coming months. Back to you. All right. So seems like it's a good idea to bring uh, processes and to integrate our process automation strategy into the digital workplace. And that's pretty much how this partnership uh, was born. Um, there are two main reasons why um, this combination of digital workplace and content and process automation is so powerful. Reason number one is because both BC and Intex, we are both trying to solve the same problem, which is the end user having to go to so many systems, applications, and platforms to get the work done. Every single day, a user has to go to Office 365, to SharePoint, to the mailbox, to Salesforce, to Box, to DocuSign. And both BC and Intest, we try to uh, help the users not to get lost and to get the work done. And reason number two is because even though we are both trying to solve the same problem, um, we complement each other. Uh, we are two sides of the same coin. This is the front end, is the user interface of the solution. And Nintex is the back end, is uh, what is happening in the background, is uh, the engine that is going to move all the uh, content across the different platforms and is going to integrate with all of them. Let me go to uh, do a quick demo. So exactly. I'm going to start by doing a quick busy demo so you understand the context and you see what busy actually is before we uh, get into the uh, workflow demos. So busy uh, 
is like this out of the box. This is what you get out of the box. This it gets deployed uh, from a technical perspective. It gets deployed in less than a day, whether it is on-prem or in the cloud. And this is, of course, the out of the box uh, uh, design on UI. But as I said, this is fully customizable. Uh, on the on the top uh, navigation menu, uh, we have uh, corporate pages with links to some other sections of the internet. We have stories, which are corporate news. We have uh, places, which is uh, communities, knowledge centers, uh, and basically this is where I get the work done. And then we have also a people directory. All this top menu is fully customizable by business users through an easy to use uh, user interface. So you can customize uh, not only the top menu, but also the footer, the, the footer at the bottom uh, with no coding at all. And then you can, you can also create all these boring static pages that we all have in our internets. You can also create them very easily uh, through a, a busy user interface. Then we have this news carousel here. This is what we call a stories. The stories are trying to change internal comms uh, as we know them today. Instead of sending out um, newsletters, uh, through email, maybe with a PDF attached. Uh, we're trying to have uh, a storytelling approach. Uh, we, we're trying to make stories a lot more visual and social. Uh, so this is um, the news tailored for me. So our news, our busy stories are published uh, into channels. Some channels are mandatory by internal comms. Some other channels I decide to subscribe. So every single user has a different combination of news in the carousel. If we go into one of these uh, news to see the detail of the, of the article, we see a big image at the top. Then I can see that Maximo uh, published this article on February 22nd. It has been read 13 times. It has two comments and one like. And then we see a title. Uh, there should be a video rendering here or a logo. And then I can see that it has been tagged with product. It has been published in the Connect Updates channel. And I see there's some conversation here at the, at the bottom. And I could easily edit this article because I'm an author. I can edit this page. And then I can, I don't know, I can play with the text a bit. Uh, Maybe here, I can select a bit of text, highlight some text. I can then add uh, pictures, videos, whatever. And interesting here, and uh, I will skip most of the functionalities here, but we can request approval. And here we could, could bind several Nintex workflows. So different articles, different channels could have different approval workflows. And this is already making use of the Nintex workflow cloud. If we go back without saving for the sake of time, I go back to the home. So this was the uh, communications piece. If we go to the collaboration piece, down here I have the newsfeed. I have my own newsfeed. In busy collaboration happens in communities. You can have communities per project, per department, per competency, uh, per location. Um, you can have also uh, private communities or public communities. Communities are team sites, so easy governance. Uh, and here I see all the activity happening in my communities. So I see that David Fletcher, and I know this by, the, by this logo, posted a survey in the sales community. And then I then see that in the central column, Richard Kling shared a, a meeting minutes document in the global community. Uh, here, someone shared the TechCrunch article that got rendered in the newsfeed. So I keep seeing all the activity happening in my communities, uh, which is uh, a way for me to follow up on the content that is most relevant to me. It's basically, it's pool information, but we also have the push capability. And these are done, this is done through the uh, blue cards, which is push content that we are leveraging the graph to suggest connections among peers or to suggest people to follow certain communities based on the uh, Microsoft graph. 
and this is a way for the organization to foster collaboration uh, one step further. If we go into a community, for example, if we go to the global community, it's pretty slow. It's super slow. Here we go. So uh, on the right column, we have the newsfeed. Again, but only the content of this community. Uh, and then on the, on the left column, we have what we call the widgets. And widgets is a structured way to bring to the surface the unstructured content that fall down in the newsfeed. So on the right column, the newsfeed is informal and structured. On the left column, it's formal and more structured. And all collaboration happens um, here that we call it the share box. So we can create a post, so uh, please, and then I would mention a colleague of mine, Maximo, review the proposal on, and then high stack, and then SharePoint, and this is managed by the SharePoint metadata services, so we can force the taxonomy. And then I would go to my desktop and get um, uh, a, drag and drop uh, uh, this one and drag and drop a document here and then share and this will immediately if the file is not too big here we go so here we have the file with this tag I can then follow I can then follow a tag and this is stored in an out of the box SharePoint document library sorry I didn't mean to click here then um, other uh, things that we can do we can praise colleagues, so I'm going to praise Max for helping with the proposal. And I'm going to give him a congratulations, thank you, hard, great idea, hard worker, maybe a thank you. All these literals and icons are fully customizable. And normally HR, HR departments want them to match the values that the organization is trying to share across. So I would post it here and a praise, then I would like the praise. Then we can also uh, run surveys, uh, sorry, praise, run surveys, add events, write a blog post, wiki page, tasks, and everything from within the share box gets posted into SharePoint as a SharePoint artifact. So it gets captured by the Microsoft Graph and is stored in SharePoint and falls into your own SharePoint governance, right? So that was a very quick demo, but just for you to get the flavor of what busy is and, uh, before we get into the uh, workflow uh, uh, demos. All right. So when we were deciding uh, how to integrate BC and Nintex, um, there was no doubt uh, from the very beginning. Uh, we could have created a connector for SharePoint on-prem, we could have created a connector for Office 365, but from the very beginning, uh, we realized that the platform that we needed to connect to was Nintendo's Workflow Cloud, because that's the way to bring any process or process of any single system to our uh, digital workplace. And and actually, as uh, Jordi was showing you, uh, BC works on top of SharePoint on-prem, works on top of Office 365, but it uses Ninter's Workflow Cloud as the workflow engine and as a hub of integration. Using Ninter's Workflow Cloud, they manage to surface processes from anything that can trigger a workflow in Ninter's Workflow Cloud. We can surface these processes into the newsfeed and we can take action from there. And this is, as you might have guessed, we use Nintex extensions to create this connector. Extensions is the uh, extensibility framework that we have in Nintex Workflow Cloud, and it's the way we provide to any partner, any customer to bring their own API and create a custom connector for that API. And this is what we did with, uh, with BC. And I have to say that it was, uh, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, and the main reason for that is that as Jordi was saying, uh, this is a proper product with a full and documented API. So 
All that we have to, all that we had to do was to describe that API and to a JSON file and create this uh, extension, this custom connector. The DC connector, as you can see, is a set of actions, a set of custom actions in the Nintendo Workflow Cloud Designer that allows us to interact with VC, allows us to uh, write information in the newsfeed in VC, and also to retrieve information back from VC to Nintendo Workflow Cloud. We can do many things with the, with the actions that we have in the connector. So we can, for example, create a community. Imagine someone working in Salesforce, as we saw in the video. When we close an opportunity for a new customer, we can create automatically, as part of the workflow, a community in VC for that customer or for that project. We can praise someone. We can mention someone with uh, these actions. But probably the most interesting ones are uh, the ones related to cards. These three little cards that you can see here is the way we have to notify that something is happening in any system into the newsfeed of BC. And also it's a way for us to include some actions in these cards, to take actions, to trigger workflows directly from the digital workplace and also to let the process go on. Uh, but rather than explaining action by action what we can do. Uh, I think the best thing we can do is to jump directly into our demo environment and show you some use cases. So we're going to uh, demo a couple of different use cases. I will first set the context with a couple of slides for each one and uh, then we will jump into the demo. Uh, we will start with a hiring and onboarding use case. So this guy, John Bowers, is the new guy. Uh, he just won a selection process to get a job with our company. And uh, between now, the moment that he got selected, and his first day with us at the company, the recruiting process uh, needs to continue with uh, some other actions. There is a contract that needs to be negotiated. The contract, needs, once agreed, needs to be signed. Then there has to be some HR onboarding, and finally, some IT onboarding. So this is what we're going to uh, show in this demo. In this scenario, there are several departments involved. Of course, legal for the contracts, HR, and IT. But it also involves several third-party systems. Uh, Workday, where all HR information is being managed, Box, and DocuSign. I think it's, we can switch to the demo. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So again, this is a busy out of the box environment with no design. Uh, and we see that the busy bot just published through an Intel Workflow Cloud, a signal from Workday saying that in our case, Gonzalo Marcos has been selected for that specific uh, position that we have open in the company, which is project manager in our London office. And then it's only me here and two other people seeing this card because we are the managers that are handling this uh, recruiting process. So I will start by generating the contract. So the a contract has now been requested. And that has triggered a workflow. Uh, so let me explain you a little bit of what's going on in, in the background. Um, this is the workflow that we have designed in this workflow cloud. Um, this workflow has an external start. There is an external system triggering that workflow. In this case, is Workday calling this uh, RESTful API, this uh, endpoint, and triggering that workflow. Um, when the HR department, they have selected this, uh, this candidate as the final candidate and the guy they want to bring to the company, this is what triggers the workflow from Workday. And then right afterwards, we will post a card, which, was, which is the card that you were seeing in, uh, in Jordi's PC, saying that uh, finally, uh, HR has selected the, the final candidate. And this is the card that you were seeing. Uh, before that, we are just retrieving uh, the item, which is the context. 
this is where from we can retrieve the name, the last name, the email, all of the context of the uh, candidate. And right afterwards, we are going to use another uh, BC action, which is to retrieve uh, the outcome of that card. In that card, we, we could see that there was a, uh, an action called uh, generate the, the proposal, generate the contract, and this is the answer that we are waiting in there. And once we have the answer, once we can go on uh, with the process to generate the contract, this is what we will do. First of all, we will go to a certain document library to get that file, um, to get the file that we will use as a template. Uh, we're gonna use, we're gonna generate a contract and depend on the con depending on the context that uh, I need to generate the, the contract, uh, maybe it's in Spanish, maybe it's in English, maybe it's with other terms of conditions depending on the country, we will generate the, con uh, the contract using our uh, document generation action, okay? Um, the document generation action is gonna use that template and it's gonna create that contract for the candidate and it's going to uh, immediately store that document back to SharePoint and in this case, uh, BC. So back to BC. So uh, here we see again a post by the BC bot, which is the contract that it created based on the template and uh, the candidate uh, information and this uh, contract has been posted in the employee onboarding community. So if I click here, I go to the file detail page where I have a preview of the contract and I can see uh, Gonzalo Marcos, the employee. I can see the, the employee is employed as project manager on the rest of the contract. And then I can also have a conversation uh, with some of my peers like, please, and then Xavi, review the contract. And then I would have a conversation with Xavi whether we need to uh, do some minor adjustments to the contract. And once we ha are fine with the, with the contract, I would go and share externally, and this would put the contract in box for Gonzalo to review it. So, exactly, I don't have, a, I don't have an account in, in, in BC, in the organization, so uh, I cannot access internally that document, so what Jordi is trying to do is to share that file externally, in this case, he's putting that file into box so that I can, without any user account, I can access that document and have a look at that document. Okay. Right. Okay, so back to me. Okay, so back to me. And then we just need to wait for the document to arrive. There you go. Sorry. All right. So I've just received an email coming from Box saying that there is a document that I have to have a look. So I can click on that and I can see the document. I can see that it has all my contact details, everything is in there. So when I'm fine with that, or if I need to add any comment, I can say that uh, I'm fine with it. But we need to review the amount of days off, just in case. And I can post that document, okay? okay. Now, if we switch to BC. So here we left it, uh, seeing that the document had been shared in Box, and then I get a notification that there has been some activity in Box, 
And here next to our comments, we have also the activity inbox. Here we go. I'm fine with it, but we need to review the amount of days off. So instead of having to jump from busy to box and back to busy, I get all the context information from box into busy. So again, it's about avoiding the user from having to switch context over and over again. So I would fix the days off that uh, Gonzalo is requesting. I would yes, uh, edit the document again. And once the document is ready, I can request Gonzalo's signature to sign the contract. And now signature request has been sent. All right. So let's have a look. So in the meantime, while I receive uh, the email from DocuSign to sign the document, uh, let's have a look at another workflow. Uh, when Jordi was requesting the signature from the document, from the context of the document, what he was doing, he was triggering a workflow. Again, it's another workflow with external start in NWC, and this time uh, it's busy uh, starting that workflow. And the first thing we need to do is to retrieve uh, the context of that document. Uh, to retrieve, uh, there you go, we have the email. To retrieve the email address, uh, the full name uh, to the, of the person that we need to send the contract to. So I've just received an email. There you go. Which is an email from Jordi. And in this case, we are receiving this email from uh, DocuSign. So I just need to click on it, it will take me to DocuSign, and as we can see here, I can start signing my document, uh, my contract in DocuSign, okay? Same document as you have seen, we just need to go through it, and once I'm fine with it, I'll just use DocuSign to sign the contract, finish, and the contract is already signed, okay? Now, if we go back for a minute to the workflow, what is happening here, sorry, is that, sorry, wrong workflow, there you go. Once we have signed the document, once uh, the candidate has signed the document, now the next thing we are gonna do is to store that document, the document already signed, and store it back to uh, internally to, to BC, to the corresponding SharePoint document library. But also we are going to create another card in BC using the BC connector right here. And we are going to post another card in the newsfeed saying that, uh, well, the, uh, the candidate has signed the, the contract and now we need to uh, continue the process, the process of uh, getting the, uh, the new guy in the, in the company has not finished. Uh, we just need to continue and probably we will have to do uh, some additional actions for uh, and, and starting the HR onboarding, okay? And this is what we are doing with this card, okay? We are adding an option here in this card so that we can, um, we can continue the process and if we need to generate the HR onboarding, this is something that we need to, we can action directly from, from BC. Okay, so back to BC. Okay, so now I would be getting an email saying that uh, Gonzalo signed the contract and I can also see this in my newsfeed. Uh, again, the busy bot posting in my newsfeed via an Intex Workflow Cloud, a message from DocuSign saying that Gonzalo Marcos accepted and signed the job offer and then now we need to start the onboarding process as part of the recruiting process. So start onboarding. And now we sent Gonzalo an email welcoming him to the company and requesting some personal information for us to prepare his first day, like which laptop would he like to have, mobile device, social security, bank account, and so on and so. So now Gonzalo should be receiving an email with a link to a form. All right, let's have a look. There you go, this is the document. And no, no I should receive now an email coming from you. Okay. 
in the meantime, let me just show you uh, how we have created this. Okay, uh, this initial action was the, the card. And we, we posted the action. And this is how we can retrieve the action from, from the card. And this is what we are doing afterwards. We are sending an email to the candidate. And uh, we are putting a URL, which is a URL to an index workflow cloud form. Okay. So if I go back to my email, so here we go. There you go. We I have just received an email saying that, uh, well, they congratulate me to uh, for the new position. And if I click on the link, it will take me to a form, which is an NWC form. Okay. And in here, what we are doing is. This form has been designed with an Intest Workflow Cloud, with the designer in Intest Workflow Cloud. Um, but at the same time, we can take that form, that object, and we can embed that object into another HTML page, which is what we are doing in here. We are making it nicer. We, are, uh, we have created a, an HTML page, and we have embedded the, uh, the form that we have created with Intest Workflow Cloud. And when I will sign and I will fill the information saying that I'm going to be Gonzalo, uh, I'm going to go for a Mac, and I'm going to go for an iPhone. Is that OK? OK. All right. Expensive. <laughs> All right. And I will submit this form. And now what's going to happen is uh, we're going to trigger another workflow, which is linked to that form. And that workflow will surface some information into the BC News feed. So back to BC. So now uh, we see another post from the BC bot in my news feed telling me that Gonzalo filled in the form and we know that uh, he wants a Mac and an iPhone. Uh, and now I can start the IT onboarding, creating a new user or requesting the hardware and the process would continue until his first day at the company. Um, the day before uh, day one, uh, everyone in the company would get in the news feed who's coming, who's new tomorrow. So if you, if you cross Gonzalo around the building, say hi and welcome him. On day one, Gonzalo, also from the bot as part of the onboarding process, Gonzalo would get a message in his news feed with some onboarding onboarding tips and tricks on how to use the tools and how to actually collaborate with the rest of the team. And that was it for this um, scenario. Right. All right, let's have a look at another one. Uh, second scenario, it's a proving a sales discount. So Sara is a sales rep working on a, an opportunity and trying to close the deal but she needs to get a discount approved pretty fast. Since he's driving to the customer, uh, she would like to get the approval before her meeting so she can close the deal. So he launches, she launches the bot and starts a conversation with the bot to request the um, discount approval. And now, We're trying to configure the iPhone, just a second. There you go. Here we go. Maybe you can put it a little bit, bit yeah. more center. So this is the busy mobile app with the bot at the top. And I'm gonna request the discount. I need a discount. Yes, please. Lakewood.
Yes. Twenty percent. Okay, that's cool. Now, if we switch back to um, the sales manager desktop, I refresh my busy news feed, and I see the discount request. And of course, it involves also Salesforce. So Jordi Plana, well, actually it should say uh, Sara, um, requested a 20% discount for this opportunity. Um, it has a tag, which is discount request, and I can have a conversation with my sales team. Uh, should we give this customer this big discount? And then they've just called me and agreed if we close today. Super aggressive. We do that all the time. And now I could go ahead and approve that discount. Interesting is that this piece of conversation that led our team to a decision is attached to the decision itself forever. So if in the future we need to figure out why did we give this customer this discount, this conversation will always be attached to that part of the, of the workflow. Right. So back to Nintex. Uh, let me just show you what's going on in the background. Um, here is another workflow, the discount approval workflow, uh, with another external star, because in this case, uh, the busy bot is uh, starting the, the workflow. Um, a very simple workflow, but uh, very smart, uh, very cool stuff that we have in here. First of all, we are retrieving the information from, uh, uh, from, the, from Salesforce. So what I'm doing here with the external start is I'm retrieving the information that is coming from uh, the busy bot. In this case, I just need to know who is the uh, sales representative that is requesting that discount and what is the opportunity ID, okay? Uh, the busy bot is recognizing uh, the opportunity ID. Uh, he was asking Jordi, is this the opportunity that you want to ask the discount for? And this is what we are retrieving for here, as well as the percentage. With all of that, I go to Salesforce. I retrieve the details of that opportunity. So I just need to retrieve the object and uh, the amount of that opportunity to calculate the discount. And then I post the card that you have just seen in uh, the newsfeed, saying that, well, uh, we have Sarah or Jordi asking for the discount for this opportunity. And in this case, it's another action card with uh, two options, which could be approve or discount. If we reject that discount, we will just send an email to the sales representative saying, uh, I'm sorry, we cannot give you that amount of discount, it's too much. And if we go ahead, as you already did, we will send an email saying that, uh, well, in this case, your discount has been approved, and we will update uh, the record in Salesforce with uh, the discount field, okay? So in this case, sending the email and updating the record, uh, Sarah or Jordi in this case, will get the notification in the email saying that uh, uh, his or her discount have been approved on the go. So this is my inbox, and I just got an email uh, saying that your discount for the opportunity Lakewood of 20% has been approved. I get this same information, sorry, I get this same information um, in, uh, in the Salesforce opportunity. So if I just refresh this uh, Lakewood opportunity, I see 20% discount. So again, um, we could uh, trigger a workflow from the bot and the bot was intelligent enough to understand my monkey English and then to uh, bring up the, um, uh, the bot did search Salesforce for an opportunity with that name or something similar and then once the discount got approved, it updated the record for us automatically. So Sarah, who was on the road, 
got the discount appro approved before getting into the meeting with the customer. She offered the discount uh, to the customer and she won the deal. Nice. Boom. Boom. <laughs> All right. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for more examples. Uh, we would love to show you more, uh, but it's time to, to wrap up. Um, and if I had to, to do it, um, I would just mention uh, these four bullet points, which is the, uh, the key points of the, of the session. Um, first of all, um, get notified and take action. This is one of the things that we are doing with, uh, with BC. As you have seen, we are working with the, uh, with the cards, uh, with the actions that we have in Interoflow Cloud to post cards and actionable cards and take action. Um, which means that we can notify when something happens in uh, Salesforce, in Box, in any system that can trigger a workflow, we can notify that in the news feed in, in BC. And more importantly, in these cards, we can add actionable messages. So that means that, uh, for example, in, this, uh, in the last example, approved a discount, rather than just notifying that uh, someone is requesting a discount, I offer the option of approving the discount directly. I'm offering all the context, so I don't have to go then to Salesforce, have a look at the opportunity, and then go back to BC and approve that discount. I can do everything directly from the digital workplace from BC. Okay. Um, if I have two minutes, I will just, I would like just to show you uh, these cards. Okay. The cards that we were seeing in, in BC um, are not exclusive for PC. They are adaptive cards, which is uh, part of the Microsoft Bot framework. Okay? These cards uh, is a way to exchange messages. It's part of the Bot framework, as I was saying. And it's a way to exchange these messages across different platforms and, uh, and across different channels. So, a card that you, have, uh, that you can see here is a card that we can publish in, in Teams, but it could be something that we can include an email as an actionable message, or it's something that, uh, for example, we could include in uh, Facebook this way. And the way we do it is if I go back to the workflow for a minute and go for one of the cards, this is how we are doing it. Okay, so in the card, uh, well, this seems like it's too technical, but uh, this is just a JSON object that we are including, and this is what we will be posting, okay? Okay, so I can just take this template for the card that we are using, and I can have a look and work with this card and see what it looks like, okay? This is the card that we were posting, okay? In this case, with the Facebook format, but this is the way we were posting it in PC. And if I need to change anything, I don't know, if for example, I want to change the logo of uh, Salesforce and, and the name of the system um, adding this, notif uh, this notification, I can just go to, uh, for example, Workday, for example, or DocuSign, let's pick this image. I can then go to the URL and I can change this URL of the image and to make it look like DocuSign. I can then go to the text and rather than saying Salesforce, it's gonna be DocuSign. Okay, so this is how we work with the adaptive cards and this is how we can bring these cards into a BC action in the BC connector and this is how we can post and include these notifications into the BC News Feed, okay? Make the conversation part of the, of the process. Um, we have seen uh, in, in these two examples that we can, in any card, in any content that we have in BC, we can add some comments and we can have a conversation. Uh, so as Jordi was saying, we can now not only track our decisions in terms of who took that decision or when he took that decision, but also what was the conversation around uh, that content that led to that decision, which is very important. And all of that is using the, the context. Um, in every uh, piece of information that we can see in BC, uh, 
uh, this is using the, the context. So in the first example, when we were generating the, the contract for the candidate, we didn't have to provide the contact details, the name, uh, the last name, or the email. It was all part of the context. Or when Jordi was sharing the, uh, the contract uh, and generating um, the tokusign uh, email, he didn't have to provide any information because it was part of the context. So a sales opportunity, a contract, every piece of information has a context in BC, and we can use it. This is how we can bring intelligence to the, to the workflow. And talking about intelligence, the busy bot is the intelligence bit of the, of the solution. Okay? The busy bot is like the, uh, the friendly face of uh, an interwork for cloud. And this is how we can uh, turn our workflows into intelligent workflows uh, for the digital uh, workplace. We only have five minutes. So if uh, anyone has a question, we will be, yes, go ahead. Do you hear that? No. Uh, sorry. It's part of this. Is it on SharePoint only or can it sit outside of SharePoint? So the busy part runs on SharePoint 2013, SharePoint 2016, and Office 65, but it cannot live outside of SharePoint. Uh -huh. No. And is it meant to replace the intranet for corporations? Yes. Yes. Most of our partners use it uh, at the core of their intranet. And of course, then they have our uh, uh, partners in our channel customizing and adapting the final, I don't know, 20% maybe. But uh, yes, our customers are using Busy uh, at the core of their internets. One last question. Do you see that issue? Is it possible to also keep from social media? So through, through the API and the SDK that we provide to customers and partners, uh, it's very easy to implement that functionality almost with no code, but this is not something that we deliver out of the box. But we've seen many customers of ours have this functionality. You mentioned uh, when you were talking about the navigation pages and so forth, the front end, the GUI for BC. Um, you mentioned communities. What are those built on? Are those built on SharePoint groups or AD groups? The so, busy communities are team sites. So, so even though you're operate, you can operate on-prem, on-prem is not going to have Microsoft team sites because that's an Office 365. Yeah. Then we do uh, SharePoint sites. Okay. So, basically, uh, we want it to uh, be uh, completely transparent for IT, not to have to care about another platform governance. So all the governance that you have in place for your SharePoint deployment, whether it, uh, in the cloud or on-prem, it automatically gets inherited by Busy. Or all your backups, all your uh, 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 site collection permissions, everything is already in place out of the box. And then in relationship to that, um, the Nintex portion is all using the Nintex workflow cloud. So if you're on-prem, you're going to lose all that. Not really. Not really. Um, oh, so you, that's not a product that just ties to Office 365? No, but uh, even, even if so, we also have actions to call the workflow from SharePoint on-prem to Nintendo Workflow Cloud. So that's possible. Okay, if you have seen in the morning, uh, in the <laughs> keynote, uh, Ryan was calling a workflow from SharePoint on-prem or Office 365 using an action, the external start. This is how we could use it, for example. Yeah. Actually, we have some uh, joint customers that are on-prem and are now uh, starting to use Nintex Workflow Cloud. And the main reason why they still on-prem is because they have so much legacy, but uh, they can uh, still leverage the on-prem with Busy and connecting to the Nintex Workflow Cloud and use it as an um, integration hub with all the rest of the, all the, all the, of the vendors. Yeah, so it's not a storage point or it's not a something the users have to interact with. It's a back-end platform. Yeah. This is why we decided to do the integration with Nintex Workflow Cloud. Okay. Rather than keeping the context in SharePoint and Office 365, if we connect to Nintex Workflow Cloud, we can have access to everything that Nintex Workflow Cloud can have access, which 
we can connect to any API, so that's why we decided to go for an integer for cloud. Uh, not um, into the cards, but uh, most customers, they have forms to kick off workflows. And then you can still then use the, the bot to interact with the forms, or you can go straight into the form and fill in the fields yourself. But you cannot embed a form into a card because uh, the cards are typically um, a lot smaller than forms. But you can link for, uh, from a card, for example, you can link from for, uh, to a SharePoint page with an index form embedded, for example, that you can do. Can you mention communities and channels? Was that interchangeable? No. Um, um, channels, I'm sorry I had to uh, uh, do a, only a five uh, minute demo. I could demo for hours and probably that's, what, that's uh, the reason uh, of this confusion, but um, news, uh, that we call stories, are published in channels. You can have a channel match a community, but that are completely independent things. Communities are for collaboration and getting work done. Channels are to push out corporate news. So they are different. No, no, it, everything you saw here is busy. Of course, except for the Nintex part, but I mean, uh, uh, um, um, the busy, the stories, communities, the action cards, the bot, everything is busy. But the fact that, that it's a channel, it's, it's a, a tag of sorts. Sorry? Is it, a, is it metadata or a tag that no. you're using? So, so um, when you publish an article, you can tag it. Uh, for um, uh, to improve searchability, findability in search, and then you decide I want this article to be published in this corporate news channel, which internal comms made mandatory for everyone, and then I want to publish this same article also to the R and D channel that I personally decided to subscribe. In, in just a few minutes, it's very difficult. We also have audiences. We, I mean, it's very difficult to explain a, a, I would say, a very comprehensive product for intranets or digital workplaces in just five minutes. But uh, if, uh, if you're around, we can later give you a, a broader demo. Okay, we and the other thing we saw here today is readily available now? Yeah, everything is available. Great. So we don't have time. For, for more, uh, Jordi and me, we are going to be at the, at the event, so don't hesitate to, uh, to grab us and to throw any, any question. We'll be more, more than happy to, to answer. Thank you very much. I hope that was uh, useful for you. Thank you.